See, the IT industry taught me one golden rule. When the competition is tough and you are the underdog, leadership can be earned if you change the rules of the game and disrupt the existing model. Emerging nations are no longer growing in the shadows of others. We have the power to disrupt, the means to build, and now we must seek the wisdom to sustain. We have the benefit of history and the mistakes we must avoid. We have the benefit of technology that can find smarter ways to manage resources and frugal ways to innovate. Therefore, I believe we have the power to demonstrate new and responsible ways of development. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Shri Digvijay Singh, Shri Krish Gopalakrishnan, Shri Hem Panda, Sri Ashok Khosla, and all of you. I thank you for requesting me to be here for the Business for Environment Forum for the opportunity to share my thoughts at this global summit. The summit only resonates what I believe is a historic opportunity for all emerging markets to demonstrate leadership. As we all know, emerging markets are at a phase of heightened intensity of reforms and level of economic activity, which is resulting in rapid economic growth. They represent the next wave of investments in infrastructure, consumerism, and financial markets. Monies are flowing from other markets as investments in a tough and volatile global economic environment. It is the emerging markets that are driving the world's current economic growth. But while these nations were emerging, the rules of the game changed. Today, we have less arable land on the planet, a crisis of water, and not to mention that we are consuming 30% more resources than sustainable. Ladies and gentlemen, whether we like it or not, whether we think it's not fair or not, the rules have changed forever. We can no longer assume infinite, abundant availability of land, water, air, and energy sources, unless we rewrite the laws of physics, which you'll agree is unlikely to happen. The voice of emerging markets on the world stage is getting stronger and heard more often. We must use that voice to talk about how we will do it differently. We must act and show how, and then we must use our voice again to urge the rest of the world to follow responsibly. I do not see growth and sustainability as the two sides of a coin. I see them as two wheels on which modern economics will run. It's the only way. So what are some of the mantras of green growth? Growth and infrastructure go hand in hand. As a sector, it consumes enormous amounts of an emerging nation's resources. A recent study report states that 80% of India's future infrastructure is yet to be built, an astounding statement in itself. Therefore, we need to mandate that this infrastructure comprising roads, highways, buildings, townships, airports, and seaports be built in a sustainable manner. What approaches, what frameworks, and what technologies are needed to do this should emerge from collaboration amongst nations. India must draw upon its own native indigenous knowledge and combine it with modern technologies to innovate. For example, bamboo thrives in India, but it's in Europe that experiments in using bamboo for construction is taking place. Emerging markets are characterized by consumerism. People wants are increasing Highly aspirational consumers are demanding all manners of products and services. Sensitizing them towards making the right choice and choosing a greener product or responsible waste management are critical behavioral changes that need to be developed. Sometimes behavioral changes can be achieved through legislation. For example, we have seen surges in the sale of diesel passenger cars in India, driven primarily by the price differential between diesel and petrol, leading to lower cost, running cost of diesel cars. While being more cost effective for the consumer, diesel cars are more polluting than petrol cars. The government has stepped in to remove subsidies on diesel in a phased manner which will address the issue to some extent. However, auto manufacturers too will need to invest in research to develop alternative fuel vehicles, else we will all continue to pay an environmental cost for our actions. Now let's consider the matter of leadership. Leadership and vision is where I believe the emerging markets can really differentiate themselves. Traditionally, 
Emerging markets have followed the methods and practices of the developed countries as a proven recipe for economic success and national prosperity. In the last century, products and services and their innovation was largely driven by the developed world, with these trickling down to the emerging markets over time. The developed world represented thought, research, and knowledge, while the emerging markets represented markets available to be exploited. Products were designed in the US and Europe, while lower components were sent to cheaper manufacturing destinations like China. Software development, maintenance, and later business processes were outsourced to Indian IT and ITES companies. Financial services products were developed in centers like London and New York based on investment requirements of the haves and farmed out to the rest of the world. However, through this engagement process, emerging markets have been able to learn, adopt, adapt, and carve out their own areas of leadership. China is undoubtedly the global leader in large-scale and low-cost manufacturing. India is a global force in IT and outsourcing services, driving innovations in newer models and platforms, and steadily moving up the business value chain. Both China and India have built their leadership in these areas on the strengths of their populations, a relatively lower-cost environment, and higher levels of process orientations. Besides, they have continuously striven to extract more value-added uh, aspects of the business by developing the skills of their workforce, reverse engineering, and coming with powerful solutions for their domestic markets. Developing leadership in green growth does not mean that emerging markets need in any way compromise the advantages that they have painstakingly built over decades, and it's now recognized worldwide. It means that these emerging nations need to use the same rigor and commitment to greening and thereby extending their present competitive advantage. China, as we know, is a world leader in manufacturing, thereby also making it the world's highest producer of carbon dioxide. With global pressure growing from consumers, competitive pressure for more sustainable products, and world opinion for China to reduce its emissions, China is best positioned to be a leader in green manufacturing. The more this, more, this move would give it a new opportunity to move into yet another value-adding aspect of manufacturing. It would follow, therefore, the Chinese manufacturers would need to have the most energy, water, and waste-efficient plants in the world and have sustainable supply chains. China would need to minimize the life cycle environment impact of the products they manufacture and also lead in green certifications such as LEED and ISO 50001. By doing this, they would not only ensure conservation of their natural resources and optimization of cost, but they may also be in a position to get better prices for their products. Green manufacturing principles that take root in China could be taken to the world, just like quality management was developed in Japan and later adopted by the rest of us. Now let us consider the Indian context. Indian IT and ITES companies manage the IT and business process outsourcing requirements of the largest companies in the world. ICT, as we all know, can play a major role as an enabler in enhancing sustainability in the corporate world. These skills give India an opportunity to assume leadership in IT for green by developing world-class IT solutions that ensure that global companies are able to run their businesses in essentially a more sustainable manner. I truly believe that India could become the global hub for conceptualization, development, and incubation and innovation of IT for green solutions in fact, our company, Tata Consultancy Services, has an eco-sustainability services business unit that works specifically in this space. Another example I can think of is Israel, an emerging market which in many ways derives its leadership by being the hotbed of innovation. With the most startups per capita worldwide and the third largest, highest number of patents per head, Israel has become one of the leading players in the world of high-tech innovation. From health breakthroughs to the technology, agriculture and environmental and the arts, the country's innovations are transforming and enriching lives everywhere. In April 2012, in commemoration of their 64th anniversary of the formation of Israel, they unveiled 64 of the most promising made in Israel innovations. Israel could build on these achievements and become a hotbed for green innovation, and these innovations could even be tested and commercialized in other emerging markets. I've spoken about India, China, and Israel, and the leadership opportunities they have in a specific area. By focusing on our strengths, we can demonstrate new and different growth models for the rest of the world. Emerging markets are currently in an enviable position where they are driving the world's economic growth. However, they will need to consider their global status with maturity and vision. 
mutual cooperation amongst emerging nations based on common issues and common goals could help them form a green ecosystem of their own. For example, a green product innovation conceived in Israel, manufactured in green factories in China, enabled by IT for green solutions out of India, and commercialized for the world. We cannot rewrite physics, like I said. We cannot forget the limited resources we have, we have on this planet. But what we can do is to draw the mental borders of what we will do and what we will not. So we will constantly explore the less carbon intensive ways of doing things. It's only by settling these constraints upon ourselves, we will be forced to find new technologies and new models for green growth. Summits like this one were few and far between 10 years ago. That shows that we are at least starting to address these challenges. The next 10 years should be one of determined action. After all, as someone has said, human intelligence is the only unlimited natural resource. Let's use it for the benefit of this planet. Thank you very much.